So sometimes, you know, these projects do span like six to eight weeks of from me actually initially planning out um, my idea from from the initial concept idea through to the design and then sketching to the actual completion. Hello, welcome to Finding Inspiration with Sandra. Can you please tell a little bit about yourself? Hi, Sandra. So my name's Melody Hames. I'm based in the northwest of England, a place called Manchester. Um, I'm also known as the horse barber. Um, so I shave horses. Um, I also shave horses with patterns as well. Um, so yeah, that's what my day job. <laughs> <laughs> that is amazing. I think you're like only one in the world or maybe is there like more of you? Like so... You, so so um it's definitely growing um i first sort of came to the spotlight in the media in like 2015 i think it was um and it's definitely grown quite considerably since then there are a handful of us dotted around the world um however because we're artists we're all unique in the way that we do it in our approach so um none of us are exactly the same if that makes sense um but yes there is a handful and it's becoming more um widely accepted and popular and understood as well wow that is amazing so how did you actually start how did you get the idea to to share the horse Gosh. well um when i was nine years old i had an irish pony a connemara his name was misty and he had a condition called cushing's disease which in horses um it inhibits them from shedding the coat so we have to then shave the coat off for them for their um you know for the comfort and well-being of the animal mm -hmm. so at a very young age I learned how to shave horses and then as I got older um my friends would ask me and then friends of friends would ask me um so when I was in university I set up as like a bit of a side business for some income mm -hmm. and then in 2012 uh, one of my clients um because I started the business at that point um, Terry is a name and she asked me if I would do like a star on a horse's hindquarters um, and I remember thinking I've never done this before but I have this motto of say yes and worry about how you're going to do it later so I said yes and Terry was like really great she was like don't worry you know it's fine if you if if it doesn't work we'll just say shave it off anyway I did it and she loved it so then she popped it on her social media and then from that day on it became like people saw it and they wanted me to do it so that's where it grew really the the creative side from it yeah oh, that is amazing so do you know how to draw how did you get with the shapes and all do you have like some kind of artistic soul in you or mm. so i am definitely um a creative minded type um versus academic i'm very much more um uh, into art and design at school um, I kind of excelled in the art and design but everything else kind of just was a bit average to be honest but when it came to art and design I was like you know because I loved it and I breathed it and I, I did really really well so um, over the years when I left school I actually went to college and then I, I got some um, employment for quite a few years but um, it didn't really drive me it didn't make me tick so luckily I had the opportunity to go back to to college and university and I did graphic design so um, initially I was going to do fine art because I really like fine art but something told me to go down the graphic design route and I think that um, that really helped propel my understanding of um, design processes so that now when I shave horses I very much follow that trained of thought you know um graphic design point of view where you develop your idea you do primary research you do um sketching your ideas and you follow um but it's never too strict though you've got the freedom to do as you please because it's freehand because my work on the job is freehand versus uh stenciling so you've got that freedom to um do anything you want really wow that is amazing i really love that so Thank is you. it hard to to shave the horse like you it is not like you're having a brush or anything so how is it is your your horses are amazing so i'm just wondering how to do that is it that hard to control it on just shape your um yes is the answer it is very much learning on the job so um the clippers can weigh different different weights so then your muscles in your arm can become achy so you have to sort of build up your muscles you need to be quite physically agile you need to know horses first and foremost though you need to have an understanding of horse language because it's all about the horse that stood in front of you 
horse clipping is not a new tradition it's been happening since at least pre-war times because in, in the war days they used to shave the horses on the front line and and stuff so it's not a new concept shaving horses however the creative stuff very much um is in uh, is more on the newer side um so you have to know the horse language so the horse has to be comfortable and happy first and foremost so that's your first point of call make the horse happy it is very similar to grooming and it is a form of grooming but you have to um let the horse know that first and then when they realize that it's a big grooming session they'll absolutely stand there all day for you because it's attention and horses love to be groomed it's horses mm. yeah, horses love being groomed so um if they don't there is some horses that don't particularly like being touched maybe they've got a skin condition or they've had a past injury that's psychologically a bit traumatic for them so um in that instance we don't pursue uh, creative grooming but if the horse is happy to do so then it's one big pamper session and they love it wow that is beautiful i never thought about horses Love it or not love it, but actually to just hear how you are talking about horses loving it, I think they are really enjoying also in your art. So that is amazing. Yeah, thank you. My horse particularly, who you can see in the background here, Romeo, mm -hmm. um, he's featured in many of the bigger clips that I've done. Um, he's like my business partner, really. He's my, he's my friend, he's my partner, he's my horse, but he's, he's very much my business partner as well. Um, it, I spent two years before I shaved his head building his confidence because he, he did not have a lot of confidence when he came to me. So oh. I had to spend time. So although, um, you know, it looks like, oh, it's amazing. He stood there and he must love it. I did have to spend two years just gaining his full trust before I would push him past anything that he was happy with. And now, like, if I dare leave him, he's like, come back, you know, <laughs> come back, carry on. <laughs> Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow, I love that. Actually, I never thought so. I, I'm not familiar that much with the horses. I once tried to ride it and it was a mess. I kind of <laughs> fearing of horses. So when I'm seeing you talking about them, like real animals, like real human beings, and even they have like, need to have confidence and all, it is like a really new world to me. So that is wonderful to hear more about yeah. this kind of stuff. Yeah, so <clears throat> I'm very much, um, a belief that um, animals are definitely as intelligent, if not more, than us. Um, the intuitive is probably higher than us. That's how they survive. Um, horses are uh, prey animals, so they rely very much on their instinct and being able to pick up vibes and energy to survive. So a horse will definitely know like what your intention is with it before you know sometimes um so it is very important to connect make that connection because a horse knows what you're thinking if you want to spend time and affection on that horse it will reciprocate however they will also exploit your weakness if you don't really know how to handle them they quickly figure out you know because they, they it only take some seconds to figure out figure out the herd in a field and oh. um, so it's the same with humans so it is important to let them know that you know you won't be pushed around because the big strong animals however you don't even need to raise your voice to do that your body language can let them know that without raising your voice um, and then when you're all on the even playing field then you can really connect um, but it is it, you don't have to speak the same language to understand each other. Um, horses just give so, so much. Um, yeah, they're amazing. <laughs> I'm very yeah. Yeah. yeah, I can see that just from your stories and all. I, I wish to have like that connection with the horse now because I also love animals, but I need to get connected with them, just you said. So getting connected with the horse, I never thought it is possible in this in this kind of Yes. Oh, yeah, it is beautiful. Oh gosh, especially now with everything that's going on in the world. I mean, we've had a lot of our everyday um, activities removed, but when you've got livestock to look after, that's really kept us going. Us for, that have got horses and livestock and animals and dogs, that's really, they've been um, quite a godsend, haven't they, in these times, to be honest. Um, so that whole, because horses are always living in the moment, you see, they don't think about the past, they're not worrying about the future, they're always in the moment. So that's why you can really ground and connect with them because they don't hold yesterday against you, unless you were mean to them, they don't forget that. Um, but they're not calculated in that sense as a general rule. 
So they offer that instant in the moment connection and then you can forget about everything else. Um, so they are really, really, um, some people use them as therapy, therapy animals as well um, because they are really good with energy and like transforming sadness mm. into happiness and stuff like that. Wow, I love that. I didn't know that actually about sadness and happiness and how a horse actually can help, but I guess every animal can help in, in its own way. So that is beautiful. Yeah. So definitely. how long do you need to make some art on the horse? How, how long does it take whole process? Okay, so sometimes I only do like a small hind quarter feature. So if I'm doing a regular clip, we'll just do a small feature on the hind quarters of the horse um, mm -hmm. because people only want minimal. And then I go right through to a full body project. So if I go to shave a horse and they just want a small piece on the hind quarters, I might spend, I'll, in the moment, I've probably only got about 10 to 15 minutes to come up with something because we don't want to keep the horse waiting all day. So I'll ask the um, owner what they have in mind, you know, if they got a theme, as one person said, Game of Thrones. So I did um, the wolf sigil on the hindquarters. So in a few minutes, I, I said, OK, I'm just going to give you a couple of my ideas from what you want. And she's like, yeah, yeah, let's go for it. And then I did it. So I spent about two hours on that. So sometimes I only have 10 minutes to plan. Wow. I oh, know and then I'll <laughs> spend about an hour or two actually doing the piece then from that end of the scale there's the full body projects like Romeo here so I spent physical hours spread over a few different days was nine hours eight or nine hours on that project what I can often do is there's um, a Native American one that I did and I spent six weeks actually researching the symbols and what they meant and the culture oh. I was trying to represent it, you know, the best that I could. So sometimes, you know, these projects do span like six to eight weeks of, from me actually initially planning out um, my idea from, from the initial concept idea through to the design and then sketching to the actual completion can be anything up to like eight weeks. Wow, that is amazing. So actually there is a story on each horse, like yes. art and story. Wow, that is beautiful. Everything's got a concept and um, I mean, behind it. I'm actually uh, planning my next one at the moment. Um, I have been planning it for quite a few months, actually. This is more of a more of a long standing one and it might not even be ready for another year or so. However, that one's going to be really good. So I'm spending a long time. I'm going to do my best to justify the concept is what I'm getting at. I'm going to do my best to make it as good as I can um, and hopefully it will be well received. So yeah, it's, yeah, don't rush. Don't do things in a rush. <laughs> wow, looking forward to that one, really. And I'm really wondering what will be. So, yeah, amazing. Thank you. <laughs> wow, well, it is amazing. Actually, when I saw you, like, on the television, and I was like, well, is that possible? Like, I never thought about the ideas of sharing the horse and actually make art on the horses. So I think it is a beautiful way to, to show the art on the, some other way. Yeah, and it is really nice to see and hear people's from the outside looking in uh, their interpretations because it's like with any art, everyone's got their own interpretation of it. Um, and this art happens to be on a horse. What I would like to touch on is, um, so horse shaving has been happening since at least the 1800s, possibly before then. Um, what tends to happen is sometimes when people aren't familiar with the horse shaving process, they can sometimes think that it's um, not, kind to the horse and that the horses are forced to do it against the will. I would like to reiterate that that's definitely not the case because if a horse didn't want me to clip it, there's no way I would be able to because they could stop me, they would kick, they would bite, they would do anything that they weren't happy with. Um, so I would like to put a point across that they are regularly shaved. It's just because we use patterns that it's noticed in a different way. It's actually not different from how we would regularly shave them anyway. Um, so I would like to explain that to some people that might not be familiar with shaving horses, that it's not purely done for cosmetic reasons. We actually fundamentally shave horses to regulate the temperature because as working animals, um, we have to remove the fur, otherwise they uh, get wet and sweat and can catch a cold, you know, in the winter time. It's very much like taking the jumper off when you're in a gym session so that you can cool down quicker so that the horse can then have blankets, which I've got one here, actually. We put the blanket oh. over the horse, you know, in the winter, so to replace the fur, however, when they're working, because they'll athlete, oh. essentially. That's why we shave, but I just do it with a creative twist. <laughs> 
Well, I think they are more happy like to have something on them, like something different. Maybe even the horses between them, like, oh, you are having some beautiful art. So I, I, I'm like thinking well, like that. So I think they are really happy with that. Well, I know like when I've shaved my horse and then say if I've shaved the horse in the stable next to him, he's always watching. He's like, what are you doing? <laughs> Why are you doing that horse and not me? They definitely, definitely do get a little bit jealous or they definitely know that each other, if one's getting feed or one's getting attention and groom, the other's like, oh, come to me. You know? <laughs> very, very much so, yeah. So they cute, definitely. so nice. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. So which one, like, the most familiar art, the most famous art or the most favourite one from, for you? So um, it's a question that I get asked quite a lot about like which is my favorite piece of work and I would say and I always kind of answer it this way um, I think each individual piece has quite a significant meaning so um, they are all for one reason or another I connect with them this one here was the first one Armour de l'Amour which is about wearing um, yourself as your arm wearing yourself yourself as your armor so that it can't be used against you and like having that love for self inside because it offers that protection then mm -hmm. from um anyone that basically doesn't want you know you to be doing great like you can be like okay this is me i'm fine i'm, I'm okay within um and then that also helps other people as well and um, so that was the initial one that was uh sprung us to social media really in 2015 so i'll always have um a lot of I look back fondly in that one because that was quite a poignant moment for us, especially that picture. That was the one that seemed to capture a lot um, of the social media interaction. So that one was significant. Um, I also had the Macmillan Cancer Charity one, which was um, a fundraiser for cancer support for people that have cancer in the UK. There's a charity called Macmillan Cancer. So that one was quite significant because that was for my uncle that passed away a few months prior mm -hmm. and it was quite a personal project. Um, and then there's the Native American one, which was really nice because um, I probably put most effort into that one in the sense of every single hair space was utilized. And that was a really, really nice project to do as well. And learning about, you know, the healing healing of the Native Americans. I find it so inspirational um, about the way that they very much uh, consider energy and healing powers and, and learning from within. So I love their message as well. So it was really nice to share that. Um, and then most recently in, well, I say most recently, the years are passing quite quickly. November 2018 was the centenary of the end of um, World War One, which was um, 1918. So it was uh, 2018, November. And mm -hmm. it just started to fall on the Remembrance Sunday and I did a war horse um, clip. Um, so that I think was that one has a very, very special place because I've always been interested in history and um, especially like war times and how, um, you know, the war played out really and had an effect on the, the world going forward. And of course, the, the horses and the mules and the animals that were involved in the war time. So um, that was definitely a poignant, poignant clip for me, that one. Really enjoyed doing that one. Wow, it sounds really amazing. I would like to see like maybe on social media and anywhere, like story or feature art. It would be really cool, like, this is art, what I did, and this is what mean to me or something like that. I would really, I think it would be really happy to read or something like that. <laughs> well, what I'm going to do is, because I do have a blog on my website, thehorsebarber.com, and I have touched on certain bits, but I'm going to consolidate it all in like a reflection and go over everything from start to finish. And I'm just having um, my website updated at the moment. So I will definitely pop that because it was in my mind anyway. So now you've brought it to my to my mind. That's definitely, and it's really good to hear you say that because I'm like, okay, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> so I'll definitely include that on the um, updated website. I would like to do that. I think... At the time when I've been doing things, I've not realised sometimes the significance of what I've been doing or um, that kind of thing. I've just always rolled with how I feel. I always go with what I feel strongly about. And if it doesn't line up or it doesn't feel right, I'll move away from it until it does feel right. So I think there's always that higher guidance been present, but I've not always been aware of it, if that makes sense. Um, so now when I look back and I reflect on it and I'm like, oh, yeah that's really like poignant you know so it's nice for me as well to look back at the journey so far and then the journey moving forward because um I'm 
in the process of um, releasing my um, team horse barber branch of the business. So the team horse barber is very much about like-minded equestrians that want to excel and connect with the horse. And then I'm bringing out my own clothing line alongside it. So oh, that nice. when people wear the clothes, hopefully it reminds them, you know, of that, that message really. Um, yeah. But that's that's in the process. It's, I've got a couple of the first things, uh, products ready. I've got some hoodies and and some clothing. And then next week, actually, it should be online. So so it's definitely a progression, um, and transition over time, and and an evolution really of the brand. And it's really it's really I couldn't have dreamed, you know, where it would go. To be honest. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine. I think you can actually inspire people because we all have a lot of ideas, but sometimes we just think it is too crazy to do this and who would actually want to do that. So when they see something like this, I think you can inspire a lot of people. And this is why I actually love to talk with other people because they also inspire me, but I think they also inspire others. So it is a really pleasure to talk with you about all this. I really love to hear that because um, that means more to me than anything, you know, to inspire other people has always like meant something to me definitely and it's always made me feel good as well in the same sort of way to know that I can help others because I think that that's what we're here to do really as humanity and as, as human beings we're here and we're all part of each other's journey um, and recognizing that um, I think it makes for a better um connection in humanity really I didn't realize that before but I see now just how important it is because we all do have an impact and a duty really to consider how we're impacting the next person along and I think if that was um, any message that I could put across in my work that I would love to put that across because like you say um, to inspire others it's really good um, definitely definitely because it's you sometimes you're too scared to make the break it's like when I, the, st the turning point really of how I ended up on this journey is I actually left a job and it was a very well paid job um, and it was in a, in a, um, a office and it, it was very, very well paid, very well sort of desired job. However, I just wasn't happy. And after a couple of years, I thought I need to leave like, and I was scared to leave because everyone around me was saying, don't leave, it's a secure job. You need the security you know, you have bills to pay, this, that and the other. Um, and I, actually for the first time ever, I went against that grain um, and it was scary. And I remember thinking, oh, but I knew I couldn't stay. Something was pulling me out of it. I knew I couldn't stay there. So I listened to that inner voice and then that was the game changer really because then I went back into education and I was a little bit, um, I didn't have very much money for a while and it was tough, but it was all part of the journey and learning. So that first step is always the hardest. Um, however, when you make it, it becomes easier. It becomes easier and it's, it's not easy along the way, don't get me wrong, there's always going to be hurdles. However, you become more resilient to them and you work through them. And if you really want it, if you're passion driven, nothing's going to stop you. Nothing, nothing's going to stop you. Yeah, I can see that and I'm really happy that you choose to just change your pet and just to make yourself happy but also others as well so because i yeah. think you're just your energy is contagious and that you can just with your words and with your art make people happy yeah. so thank you it is it is um it does affect the next person i'm gonna think that anything that's successful happens when we're offering a service that benefits others so if you know if you are sort of serving other people in whether whatever way that is whether that's food whether that's um anything you know it's providing something for someone else and that brings us back to all being connected so like with the horse barber business when I'm shaving these horses it's very very much about me figuring out what the owner of the horse his requirements are then the horse's requirements and it's like serving their purpose for them to have a better um connection moving forward and I'm just a, a bridge between that so I think that that anything that's done with that pure intention um it's it can't really ever be broken if you see what I mean yeah yeah I understand so what was the most unusual idea that you get from the customer um gosh there's been a few there's there's always one that springs to mind I don't know why because it's not really that crazy but it's one that springs to mind um, there was a lady and she wanted like, you know, handcuffs and chains um, mm -hmm. 
And I remember thinking, wow, just in that moment of trying to comprehend how to shave because a chain is so like intricate and the way and it and I thought for the first time I thought can I do this and then when that happened I thought yes you can just take it so whatever I do is whenever I feel like oh I'm not sure if I can do this I go you can then I stop and I take a step literally take a step back maybe get a drink I've always got like water close by I'll have a drink and then I'll compose myself and I'll be like okay this is how we're going to do it and that is what I always do so that one was like the craziest in that sense because it was it was quite a challenge for me if that makes sense um I never think to myself like people I actually love hearing what people come out with I love to hear the most bizarre stuff. Um, nothing shocks me really in that sense. So, and, I, and I've got a quite, I'd like to think I've got quite an open mind. So, um, but the chains, for some reason, the chains just, just knocked me off. But I did the chains and I got them done. I've got a photo somewhere of them. <laughs> um, but that one just always sticks in my mind, yeah. Um, and then each time you bec- you're faced with a hurdle that you overcome, it just makes you stronger. To be honest, it just make, gives you that bit more confidence and that self-belief that you can actually do this. Yeah, definitely. The chains. <laughs> <laughs> the chains. Well, beautiful, beautiful. I really like how... Actually, after every your art or story, it is like some kind of message and I really like that because you're really yeah. inspired. You're inspiring and you're really inspiring. So I'm really happy that you became my guest because I think you are the one that I'm looking for, like inspiring people. So thank you so thank much. You. Thank you. It's not been easy. Like I say, there's been testing times um, and it's something that I don't discuss quite a lot, but I do have several autoimmune conditions, which um, I suffer with on a physical level, which not many people know about. um, And I don't really talk about very much, but I will touch on it because um, people can sometimes maybe look and think, oh, she's okay and everything's great. But believe me, it's not been and it's been very, very challenging. But I think that only adds to the way that it grounds you because there's times when you're forced to um, have to do nothing, literally physically. I've, you know, I've definitely had a lot of physical challenges that people probably don't know about. Um, And it only adds to the... um, I say it's like a pot of ingredients, you know, that creates the success. And I think that the hardships actually, they have to be in there. You can't have, you can't have the pot, that, you know, without, without that. Um, so there has been testing times and there's been times when I have sat and I've cried and I've thought, can I do this? I don't know if I can do this anymore. I'm like really, like really up against it, um, you know, and, and also I, I do recommend that if anyone's watching this, that do find themselves like up against a wall and they don't know what to do talk to someone um whether that's like a professional counselor or a friend or something like that because an outside perspective is the only way that you can pull yourself out of when you're in a bad place yourself if you see what I mean so that's what I would like to put out there um speaking from experience it really does work but you can't do it on your own like if you feel like you're at that point where you just don't know what to do or you, you feel like you've got no way out of it just get that outside perspective and it really works Thank you. Thank you for sharing and to actually talk about your personal story a bit because, as you said, probably people just say, oh, she's famous now, she has a successful business and oh, she doesn't know what is a hardship, but it is nice to actually see the real you behind all that success. Yeah, behind it, see actually what's going on there. Yeah, definitely. I've um, definitely like to think that, you know, I can bring help to others, um, but I've, I've, it's definitely not been as easy as it might look on the outside. That's all I, all I can really put across there. <laughs> but it's worth it, though. It's definitely worth it. Yeah, nothing, yeah. Nothing, what is it? Nothing worth having comes easily. That's the phrase. Nothing worth having comes easily. There's a few phrases that I say, um, and I find myself, they always pop back, you know, hard work pays off and nothing worth having comes easily. Like my dad taught me that from a very young age that hard work always pays off and it's always stuck in my mind to be honest and it really does actually it really really does um yeah beautiful well thank you so much for this interview it was a really pleasure to talk with you if you have any ending word feel free to tell to to others 
totally well if anyone's interested in following our next journey you can always sign up to the website on the home page there's a little box where you just pop your email in it's um on the horsebarber.com and um i will publish um i'll answer any questions as well if anyone's got any questions or they want to learn more please do just pop me an email over or sign up to the website and then when i put my training content on in august you can learn how to do it yourself as well um so please do get involved give me a shout i'll answer any question that anyone's got that is beautiful. So people actually will training how to how to do that themselves. That is beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. So this is actually a branch. So um, my next clip, I'll be um, uploading all the content behind the scenes so that people that want to learn remotely, because often I get asked from people around the world, um, they'll be able to log in and sign into the website and um, have uh, access to training content if they wish to pursue that. Yes, definitely. So it's thehorsebarber.com. Um, and then I've got my clothing coming out in um a couple of weeks time which is going to be team horse barber not 100 percent sure about how the shipping goes abroad at the moment because i don't think anyone knows what's going on with that at the minute well, we will figure it out <laughs> awesome so, awesome really amazing amazing opportunities are coming up for you so i'm really looking forward to see all that and to read about your blog also and website i'll put all that in the in the description so don't worry so people can reach you and yeah thank you once again for your beautiful energy and for beautiful inspiration and for being my guest thank you so much for having me and getting in touch and i'm really really pleased to talk to you it helps me i love speaking to people like yourself as much as you are speaking to people like me like it works both ways so definitely it's great thank you for having me Thank you. Have a great day. <laughs> you too. See you later. Bye-bye. See you. Bye.